Hello everyone and welcome to Everest 2021 Harvest Summit. Uh, today we're joined here by my friend Mim Maji, one of the Sherpas who made it to the top of K2 Winter Expedition. I would like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Michael von Klitzen and Mike Stevenson from Rope Access uh, for being here. So make sure you sit down, uh, take your time and don't go anywhere. Kick it off. Hello and thank you everyone for joining us uh, on this new episode. I am Leo Neyman. I am with Everest 2021. This year, I'm going to be embarking on an expedition to uh, climb Mount Everest in Nepal to support research on heart disease. Today, we're joined here with Ming Maji Sherpa, one of the 10 climbers who made it to the summit of K2, the second highest mountain in the world for the first time in winter. On January 16, 2021, at 4.43 p.m., Mim Maji and his team of nine other Sherpas became the first team to make it to the summit of K2 in winter and made history. Absolutely remarkable accomplishment. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And just want to dive into some introductions. Please, for those who still don't know who you are, uh, Mim Maji, tell us who you are. So my name is Ming Maji and I'm from Nepal and I was born in like at the altitude of 4,200 meters in Rolwaling Valley, which is in the um, northeastern part of Nepal. So after my, after I, fl after I finished my schooling, uh, I started um, working as a climbing Sherpa uh, in modern field, modern field since 2006. And my first mountain was on to Manas, Mount Manasolo, which is 8,000 meters. So I started directly from 8,000 meters. And after that, <clears throat> I continued. And in 2007, I got the chance to join the team on Everest. And I met the Everest Summit on 19th of May, 2007. That was my first summit in my life. And that was directly to the Everest. Everest was my first summit. And after that, I continued until now. I have I have climbed like um, thirteen eight thousand meter peak, different thirteen eight thousand. There are like fourteen eight thousand, and I have finished the thirteen. Uh, now I remain one Shisha Bama, which I'm planning go planning to go next year because still till now we are not confirmed if the Chinese government they're gonna open it for autumn season. So we are not confirmed, and I'm planning it for next year. And besides that, uh, I have done one solo climb in Nepal. And that was like the only one solo climb done till now. Nobody was from Nepal who did solo before. So I, I did solo climb. And, and I did several first ascent. And now this year we, we summit K2. And I have the record um, up climbing 8,000 meter, most 8,000 meter peak from Nepal with or without oxygen. With or without yeah. oxygen? Or is that is that the most with oxygen or without oxygen? Uh, the most 8,000 meter without oxygen. Without. That's in my name. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Well, that is quite the resume, I have to say. Um, that is amazing. So we'll kind of dive into a couple of introductions to kind of give you an idea who we are. Um, myself, I am Mikey Stevenson. Um, I am an access specialist. I'm a rope access uh, instructor, supervisor. Um, I've trained all over Canada. I've competed all over um, all over the world um, for the Petzl Rope Trip. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, as well, I have a podcast in which you know we're working with uh, Everest 2021 here. Um, and you know trying to uh, bring you know education to people uh, in the mountaineering industries as well the rope access industries so that's kind of my background okay and i'm michael von klitzing uh, i'm working with leo as a videographer so i'm taking a lot of the behind the scenes videos uh his training videos uh drone videos as well so going into the mountains and taking some drone videos um so yeah, I've been working with Leo now for the past about six, seven months. Like I said, uh, I've, I've known I've known Minna for a, for a while yet now, and um, 
it was it was been it's been it's been an honor to have you today in uh, within us and telling us the stories of uh, who Minmaji is. I myself, I'm a mountaineer, and I and I am about to embark to climb Mount Everest. So if you if you're thinking you you are probably going to go to Mount Everest this season, we'll probably see again uh, person to person, face to face in Mount Everest. Sure, 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 sure. Um, so. My question, uh, first question out here is, um, how long have you been, um, been climbing? Now you did mention 2006. Is that when you started climbing or is that yeah, when you kind of started? Yeah, that's when uh, I started, guiding? right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's when I started. Okay. And what did you did do prior to mountaineering? Um, where you kind of, you did mention a little bit, but you want to dive in a little bit more? No, I, I, I was, um, in my school. And after okay. I finished this, after I finished the schooling, I just went and joined the mountaineering. Awesome, sounds good. So it's kind of just like a natural path uh, there for you to kind of pursue mountaineering. Then, yeah, it, actually, it was something like this. Um, my fathers and like my my fathers and my families, my father, my uncles, they work as a, they used to work as a climbing sherpa mm -hmm. and climbing guide. Yeah, and. I always had the interest uh, to see that job. So how 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 how? Because when when we were very small, when in in our childhood, we used to get lots of stories to hear from our parents, like from my uncle, from my, my fathers. Yeah. And after that, I, I I had like kind of interest to see and work in the modern field just for a while once. Just it was just just a uh, enthusiasm. And after that, when, when I first joined Mount Manasulu, I felt like this job is awesome. I, I could I could travel different places. Yeah, they, the they were like we were home. always we were we were always with the team, in, enjoying enjoying the days. There used to be like um, above the base camp, we meet. We had to work hard, and there there was there were the time that um, were very hard. But uh, after we descend back from base, from like back to base camp, then we we get free time, like yeah. every every day, like playing cards, uh, joking, dancing. So it was quite, quite like a uh, very fun. <laughs> and yeah. base yeah, camp so looks like a great time. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like time, this. Yeah, this is it's a great a job. <laughs> yeah, it is a great job. Day. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> People wish to be in your uh, in your shoes. That's for sure. Um, excellent. Um, yeah, I had a question. Um, so, for someone who hasn't climbed K two, and especially in the winter time, when you uh, summited K two, describe it in, in five words. What was it like? Uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this, uh, this was historical. And this summit, the uh, the summit we met this year, it was like more emotional because mm -hmm. when we reached to the summit, we we had our national anthem on the on the top of K2. Yeah. And this this was um, <clears throat> uh, like a um, lesson lesson of the unity because when my team and Nimsta team we, we two teams we joined. Then after that, it was the work was so easy. We we just we just finished K2 just in four days from base camp. We we did our <clears throat> we did we did hard job there, but uh, when we united, we were facing so so many like difficulties. But we, we we didn't we didn't feel like we should give up. We always had the energy to move forward. Nima, and, I... I, I want to interrupt you there. I'm sorry. I want I, I, because I have a quite specific question on that point. I was at 4 a.m. in my bed looking for the updates and looking at the time that you guys will summit, and it was taking you a little bit longer to summit, and it was it was when when somebody said one of you guys made the decision and said something like we are all going to summit at the same time. There is nobody going at the first or second. You guys decided to go all at the same time. Whose decision? Who made the decision to do that? It's something like this. When we, when my team and Nimsta team, when we joined the forces, 
then there was like conclusion that uh, we should go to summit together because who said that who was the first one to say that yeah that was that was nims 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 uh nirmal purja nims dai his, okay. his idea was that yeah and since this and, and yeah since this this exhibition was for the nations up uh, for the nations and for the climber of nepal after that we decided to uh, to sing a song mm -hmm. uh, national anthem yeah that yeah. that was another another very very uh, like a good idea which connected all the nepalese people this time i think i'm sorry can you sing that song for us it's a bit long it's almost like uh, <laughs> just sing a little piece just sing a little piece <laughs> Like something like Sayutunga Pul Kahami Yote Mala Nepali. Some some this this goes like this, but it's a bit long. <laughs> amazing, amazing. Wow, I, love, I love I love that you guys I love what you guys did. I love that the uh the the trophy that that trophy K2 belongs to to uh to the Nepali people. Uh, mm -hmm. I love that uh, uh, here, like I, I just like myself, I think my, my two friends agree with me. Uh, there is no one, there is no one for me, uh, I believe that Bill, that deserves more that, that title to be the first ones in K2 in winter than, than you guys. Uh, I, I was <laughs> obviously, obviously we love everyone that climbs the mountains and there were other expeditions going on, but I was so, so happy to see that the Sherpas were going to make it. And, and I knew it. I knew it. You guys were going to make it. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That uh, whoever had the thought as well of the, uh, the 3D camera and, you know, shooting that as you're singing your, uh, I believe it was the national anthem as well, is kind of up that, com coming up that ridge. Um, whoever thought of that was just, Kudos to you. That was absolutely amazing. Watching that footage um, all the way back home and here in Canada, it was just, it was remarkable, a remarkable achievement. So well done. I, I do have a question, Emma. Um, did you find K2 more challenging than other mountains you have ever climbed before? And if so, what made it more challenging why k2 is more challenging than any of the mountains if you find it k2 more challenging what made it more challenging i think climbing k2 is is one of the biggest tasks like even like climbing in the winter was one of the biggest mission i have i had in my life and beside that if I compare K2 with other 8,000 meters, then I feel like Arnabun is more difficult than K2. But uh, K2, the thing on K2 is that uh, it's like uh, more steep, it's, it's steepy, and there comes lots of rockfall. Mm. And it's more climbing on, on the rocky, shaft, rocky sections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That 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 made it difficult. But uh, if we compare with uh, other eight thousand meters like Annapurna, the Anna, the snow condition on Annapurna, it's awful. So it keeps on snowing on Annapurna, and like there's there's it doesn't need uh, like big wind. It doesn't need big storm. If there's like very less wind, it it's, it just cover cover all the, all the base camps with the snow. Like it's it's covered all, all the track. We 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 climb up, and when we come down, or like after after like an hour or after two hours, it's it's the same again. We need yeah. to break break the trail again. So Annapurna is, I think, for me, Annapurna is more more difficult than K2. Mm -hmm. And you you know the uh, risk that the dead dead weight on Annapurna is more than K2. If see like uh, on 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 Annapurna like. Uh, you just uh i'm not sure now but uh, just a few years few years ago it was like 36 percent of chances of death and yeah. on keto it's it is 24 so it is a huge difference yeah <clears throat> and on keto the risk only the risk, risky part is uh above the bottleneck yeah there's there's hanging sarak but uh it's 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 pretty safe it is not sure that when it falls it is pretty safe but above the bottle, bottleneck, uh, there's one like uh, almost like 10 meter traverse. After that, we need to climb up, straight up, 
like in summer it's fully covered with the deep snow and there is very there's like a very high chance to get avalanche easily right. when you when you are experienced you know how to, how to how to open the roots and and till now like lots of lots lots of when like the summit in summer uh when the experience climber they open the roots then only the other the amateur amateur climbers like the like the not not so experienced climbers goes like in 2008 2008 i think same case same case was able happen in 2008 when they when they opened the roots they they took more travels which which which, which made the base of the snow um very fragile so so when they travels more because there's no base so the so the snow it's not came down this in the form of avalanche so more people died there i think so on keto the, only the risk risky part is on the summit day it's just it's just like uh, 150 meters more under 150 meters one the, that is the only risk then remaining i think other other part of the keto is okay it's not it's it's technical but um, not that much technical because when you go for rock climbing or ice climbing, you get trained there. Mm-hmm. And when you are climbing on K2, you, you don't feel like that that difficult. Gotcha. Yeah. And another, another, another thing, just, just the problem of falling rocks. It's, it's like, uh, it's Rocky Mountain. Like below, almost like below Camp 3, we need to climb more on the rock. Right. And there are lots, lots of places with lots of loose rocks. And like when we, we use, yeah, when we when we use the jumaran or ropes, we use we just sometimes we just we just shake it like this, and the ropes it just it just make the loose rock fall down, and yeah. it just hit us. That's that's the well, that's the about, problem. You're talking kid. about the uh, the uh, the area called uh, the chimney, right? Uh, chim- chimney is not a problem. Chim- chim- chimney, there's no, no no any rock fall, okay. like. A, Below the um, below the chimney, there are some some places, and it's more risky below the cam one, mm. because the cam one is like it's pretty straight. And when the when rock fro- falls from almost like two hundred meters above, and it when it comes down, it comes like a bullet. It just go, wing, oh, and yeah. you you just yeah you just sometimes you just get to hear the sound only. You don't see the rock. You just get the sound, wing. <laughs> yeah, that's terrifying the sound terrifying sound mm-hmm. i know i know the feeling i know the feeling trust yeah, me i know that absolutely feeling. um did you do something different to train for this trip um diff, uh, from any other uh, expeditions that you've done and also um ha- did you do a a lot of research like uh team research like have you been to k2 before so you had a lot of uh previous inf- uh experience and knowledge of the area or did uh you have to kind of prep that for this expedition um before yeah before before this um, winter expedition i was on k2 for four times okay i i climbed i climbed to the summit in 2014 and 17 so this this was my third summit third time summit okay perfect and i was i was on k2 last year in a winter but last year i got a coughing and i got uh, i started um chest started started like uh developing the chest in chest infections oh so uh, i almost gave up in the beginning of the ex- beginning of the expeditions so i, I was in basecamp for 10 days after that i just quit and came came down because i i thought like if i continue then i won't come back yeah it's not going, it. uh, oh yeah guys, I, but are you guys are you guys a 16 and other team on last year in K two or, or yeah we or we, we, we were six uh, seven people and one from Iceland who, who just died on K two this this year and one from Sol uh, uh, Solopakia okay. uh, one from China we three from we four from Nepal and one from Pakistan yeah we were eight people hmm. nice. Yeah. So is there something that you bring on every trip with you? Like, is there some kind of sentimental thing that you bring or? I mean, the sentiments. Yeah. Like, you, like a good luck or like something that you bring I, I, with you? No. I, for example, bring a picture of my family 
just you know just to remind to remember them and stuff like that it's like, like when when everyone everyone when they they get to the summit they just take out their country flag the most important is the country flag they just like almost like 90 percent of the climbers they, they take the climb country flag and first take the pictures with the country flag i think that that's 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 the one mm -hmm. and beside then uh, some climbers they bring their bring the photographs of their family friends and after that their sponsors Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> I I saw I had the opportunity to um to I, I follow obviously on I follow you on, on social media and Facebook and and you were you were talking about uh, like I like I mentioned to you I, I'm also a mountaineer and for me sometimes and uh, take this going away from my family it's 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 it's, it's, it's very challenging. How 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 does your family handle when you leave for such a, you know, not, not when you leave to climb, but when you left to go to K2, being, being such a dangerous mountain, how, how, how did your family handle that? And when, when I, I did this, uh, with this like soul climb, I was stuck on the summit of that mountain for two days. I, I, I got lost in like whiteout. And when there's wet out, we shouldn't be moving anywhere. We should be we should be staying in the same place till till the weather improves. <clears throat> so I, I was doing the same. And the modern I I climbed, I I soloed. It was just in front of in front of my house in in my valley. So the best climb of the of that modern it just take two hours from my home. And my mother I was at the at in my room in in our home, and I was on the top of the mountain. I was stuck there. And it was not sure that I'm going to come back. And my mother's keep on crying for two days. After that, after that, she didn't want me to go any, any, anywhere for climbing. But uh, my, my mother now, she lives in the valley where there is no internet. And my mother, she doesn't use any cell phones. And I'm, I'm, I'm living in Kathmandu. So I just make my plan, go go for climbing, come back, and sometimes my mother even don't know where where I where I go where I go, and so it's, this is something something like this. But she keeps on telling not not to go any 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 climbing. But this year uh, this year on Keto, it was more difficult to convince the families of my Sherpas than myself. I was I was okay. I could go anywhere. I I just make the decisions and just I just leave. I I don't tell any anybody in my home. I just, just my only my sister knows about my plan. Mm -hmm. And this year on Keto, when when we were like uh, we made the plan to go Keto, and I put two Sherpas in in the team. Actually, I put I, I put three Sherpas. Then later on, of the Sherpa, he left left the team. He he, he says his family didn't allow him to go. They, they were afraid that he might lose the fingers, he might lose the toes, or he might not come back. Since their family didn't agree, so he, he, left, the, he left the team. He left us. He said he, he, he didn't, didn't want to go. And after that, his decision made some, some thing, big problem for me. It, he put me in the, into the problem. And the remaining two Sherpa, their family were also like, started, started arguing with me. They said, like, we, we don't want to send our husband. We don't want to send these two Sherpas to, uh, to get with you. And I, I started convincing them. But it was it was very difficult for me to convince. It, it almost took a week. I was meeting them every day. I used to go and meet them and try to convince them. And they used to tell, tell me, like, if, if, my, if my husband get a frostbite, if my husband, husband doesn't return back, then... What will what we will do if if something happens happens to them and they they convince me on the conditions that if something happens to their husband, the wife of those those two sherpas would come and stay at my home oh. with the rest of the life. <laughs> 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 so this this yeah, this these are the some problems. And once we are on the mountain, then again it's, it's done. Yeah. And, and how did you convince them? How, how did you 
How do you get them up there with you? Yeah, I do like I was on Keto like four, four times before. I climbed twice. I return back all the time. I return back safely. And I guarantee that both of the Sherpas, they would go with me, climb, and we come back safely. And if, if the weather is not good, if the condition is not good, then we will not push forward. We will we'll not push hard. Yeah. So we'll keep, we'll go and we'll do uh, safe climbing and we'll come back safely. When I just I just convinced like this every day. And one of one of the Sherpas said, like, you know, K2 is danger. But you, you have never been to the K2. So once you go K2, you know how danger it is. One of my friends says something like this to his wife. And after that, she was convinced. So what uh, what motivates you to keep climbing in Gaji? Uh, actually. I took it as my professions. I started. Uh, I started in 2006 climbing, but uh, I started is as my own my like as my as the professions. I developed it as professions from 2008. I because from like after after 2006, I got attached with this mountaineering, and from 2008, I started it as a, as my professions. And since then, I'm I'm climbing, I'm guiding, and I organize the trips. So it's it's, it's like more it's more like a job now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, on the when when you are on the mountain, it's very peaceful, mm. and you you could see, you can see the nature how how beautiful it is. And when you are on the mountain, you just feel yourself like you have nothing on the in the nature. You're just just a small a small thing, yeah. and you very you, you, small. It, 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 yeah, it it give you realize that you are nothing. Yeah. And and it, it's like uh, we we could travel in so, so many so many different places, and we keep ourselves like very fresh all the time. So I think the, these are these are things which which attract me towards mountain. Every time when I'm on mountain, I feel like oh relax. All, all the stresses of life go away. Yeah. You, yeah. Have, you, are... have, a, you have a quote. So uh, life is beautiful. Uh, face your fear and follow your dreams. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You want to talk about it? Yeah. So did you face your fears? Like, do you have fears after you're climbing the hardest mountains in the world and climbing K2 in the winter? Do you, do you have any other fears or have you, have you faced all your fear now? So I, I've I've faced the fears. Mm, I like I got in the avalanche. Like on Arunapurna, I got in the avalanche. I was to wash I was uh, wash away. I was like rolled like this in 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 the, in the snow. You're and it took me there. almost like yeah, it took me almost thirty meters down. And I was I was deep inside 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 the snow. And I just I just like um, remove it myself and it came came out. Yeah. There I almost died, but I didn't give up climbing. Like when I, I, I made a solo, I spent 43 hours outside on the summit of like 6,686 mountain, meter mountains. I spent there without water, without tent, without food. I spent like 43 hours. I almost died, but I didn't give up till now. On Kanjanjanga, the third highest mountain, Mistakenly, I just, I just, I just made a wrong move, and I, I just fell down. I was like falling, 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 like rolling, 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 falling down. And one of my friends, he, he was below, so he just grabbed me, and he just break me, break me there. And I, I almost died there too, but still I didn't give up. So still I'm climbing. So I think I. I died several times on the mountain, but still I'm, I'm climbing. I keep I keep up climbing. So I think I I won I won my fears. Yeah. Now absolutely. I now I, when I go to mountain, I, I don't think too much. I just go enjoy my enjoy my days. I do a hard job there. We get success. When we get success, we we forget everything. When we begin, we have that that the fear that what gonna happen with the, with the family. 
if we don't return what's gonna what's gonna happen with the family so those things it keeps on it keeps um, playing in the mind but once you are on the mountain you forget all these things because you see the nature and the beauty when the beauty attracts you then you forget everything absolutely um i got a question about soloing um you mentioned it a couple times here and it's obviously not a normal thing for um people from nepal to solo what motivates you to solo um i've soloed a number of stuff a lot of ice myself a little bit of uh, rock stuff and a little bit of mountaineering solo but what motivates you to solo in in 2015 i was in i was traveling in europe uh, we, we got some program there and i met some some of the um, climbers like pioneer climbers and we we had a discussions and they are one of the, one of the one of the foreign friends he just told like uh nepal still doesn't have anyone who did solo right some some he, he, he spoke something like that and i thought like right there's nobody and people are still regard like nepali sherpa the best sherpa best best climbers strongest people then okay I, when i returned back to nepal i just decided okay i'm going to make a solo yeah solo climb yeah. because in 2015 i was okay my, i was physically okay i i got I, i already got so many trainings i was like i, I was about, about to get my uism guide uh certifications so i was i was, I was like fully trained and i yeah. I, I, had, i had got all the knowledge so i started searching the mountain and there 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 is one mountain in in my hometown It's called Tobuje. Very, very beautiful. Very steepy, steepy, but very beautiful. And I, I, I tried to make a research, and I found like uh, there were ten uh, teams who, who tried that mountain from the west side, and nobody, nobody could make it to the summit. And I, I just said, okay, I, I'm going to try. If, if I make the summit, I make, I, I make it to the summit. It's going to be like post season to, uh, from the west face. and it's it's going to be like it's historical as well yeah then i started and i went i climbed it successfully from the west face to the summit but when i reached the summit i got lost in the white out i was just right. taking some pictures with with my gopro cameras and it started it starts coming like uh, clouds it's, it's just came like boom and it was yeah. covered all the mountain was covered and i i couldn't see anything just be, just myself i could see myself and beside that i couldn't see even like 5 meters yeah then then it was it started getting wind as well and that covered all my footstep which were <coughs> the the place where i begin and i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't find my footsteps so i was not sure where to move where to go so i stayed there just for like 43 hours I stayed there right. for I spent two nights there. Yeah. And after that it just, it just the weather started getting clear. But after two days I didn't have any, any any energy in the body because I I didn't eat for like 43 hours. That's so a long time without food. Yeah. That that's, that's yeah that's, that was long time. Then yeah. Uh, then I made a, I made a rescue call and the helicopter came and I just came Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you know you know what motivates me to climb zolo the lack of good partners <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, i got no man it's, it's really it's real uh when when they when they tell you okay let's meet up in the mountains let's go climbing and then you go climbing and then they they never show up or stuff like that so that what would to be honest to me what motivates me to go solo climbing is that there's not good climbers to come with me you know so yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know what? This this story about that mountain is really really awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Um, um so can you describe the conditions that are different from winter ascents to summer ascents? Is is there much different except for obviously maybe temperature? Yeah. In summer like we when we used to, like from the beginning it's like a little easier like when we start trekking where we just walk on like a normal trek and when we we reach the on the balder balder glaciers and we we start trekking more on the morai there's like there are rocks but we could see where to step 
But in winter, all those all those are covered with snow. There's like deep snow, and there are lots of rocks, like moraine. On the moraine, there are lots of rocks. Yeah. And if, if we make make a mistake, then we just we just slip and put our put our legs inside the inside the rocks. So it it can easily break. It can easily harm our our legs. So that's right, that's. Right. This diff- in the winter is difficult from the beginning, right? Then once we are in base camp, we start feeling the cold, like the temperatures. It's in the base camp. It's like always like minus twenty. Minus twenty is we are in the minimum. It's minus twenty every time. Then right. sometimes it goes like up to minus thirty in the in the base camp, right? And like. After like uh, spending like t- almost like ten to t- ten to fourteen days, we start feeling like minus thirty is normal for us. Then we feel like we are uh, now we are. We feel like now we we got the habits. Then we feel we start feeling minus minus thirty is normal for us. Then we start we start climbing up, and it it feel like minus forty, minus forty five. We get hab- hab- we get the habits. To uh, exist in 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 those imbi- those, those uh, environment, like in yeah, the problem in the winter is the temperature. It goes like minus twenty, minus when we when we met Kyoto summit, it was like minus fifty, which was which was very cold. And <laughs> very cold. in the winter time, the mountain is more like uh, it's more ice. We could right. barely see, barely find find the snow. It's like gotcha. all ice, and when the when there is no ice, it's all rock, rocky rocky sections, and all the all rocks are very loose, and it's very easy to fall the rocks. But in summer, the mountain is more covered by snow, and all the rock it it the rock are held by the snow, so so the chances chances of falling rocks is very less. And gotcha. on the, on the summit day on the summit day in summer. It's ice inside, and there is uh, one layer of snow, which is which is uh, soft, and there is another layer of snow which is which is little little hard, and there is again an another layer of snow which is very soft. So it's like different layers. Yeah. And when we start cl- when we we climb, if we go straight up, there is there is very less less chance to get avalanche. But if we started making like zigzag zigzag or we we make a crabos. And there's very very high chance that it comes avalanche in summer, and lots of lots of people uh, fail to reach the reach the summit in summer because of because of this this problem. Right. But in winter on K2, like from Camp Four to summit, you just climb on the ice. There's no snow at all, and there's zero chances of avalanche. There's no avalanche at all, and. Yeah. The summit day, I think summit day. Only the problem is temperature. It goes minus. It goes like minus forty-five, thirty, forty-five, fifty, something like this. But there's no chance of avalanche, and you feel like winter is more safer than summer. In if you if you compare it, like in summer, like if you yeah. compare winter and summer in above the campo. That's mostly because the avalanches. In, in the summer, the, yeah, in in summer is it, there's very high chance of avalanche, but in winter you just you are just climbing on the ice and uh, and climbing ice you just it's like when you when you go for for like ice climbing or rock climbing mm-hmm. you you learn everything there right yeah. so it's it's same like on K two it's it's just when the temperature and it's, it's just the altitude we 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 were climbing at eight thousand meters. So we didn't have that much energy, and we didn't have we could not breathe that easily, like in the in the city areas. That's that's a, that are the problem. But climb climbing was wise is the same. Gotcha. What about the wind? Was, yeah. was, it, was it windier in the in the winter, or was it? So there's some big gusts that can come up from K2, right? Pardon? Was it was it windier in the in the winter time? Windier? Like was it windy? Yeah, in the winter time. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I, 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 I'm just, yeah. <laughs> All good. Uh, this, yeah, this this time when we were going to the summit, uh, we were we were pretty pretty lucky and we had a very good weather for us. Yeah. And we had bit less wind on the summit day. Okay. Nice. Nice. But yeah, but in the winter, 
since the temperature is like minus 40 or minus 50, and if there comes little wind, even little wind, you start getting freezing. So you can you cannot continue continue further. For sure. The problem in the winter is just the temperature and the wind. Wind is another biggest problem in the wind in the winter. Yeah. It's very easy to lose your fingers. It's, it's very easy to get get yourself frozen. Yeah. 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 I, I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you a question. Um, for example, for us here, uh, we are we are in a very um, different situation when it comes to uh, to to getting the money for a, for an expedition. I'm not saying it's it's. Um, it's easy. In fact, um, it is really hard, very really difficult to get the money to fund an expedition, uh, mountaineering expedition or climbing expedition. Um, uh, it, it deals with many things. One of the things is the lack of knowledge or the lack of recognizing uh, mountaineering and climbing as, a, as an export, uh, a sport that could give uh, you know, trophies just like hockey or football or or soccer or any or baseball, right? Um, I was also reading in one of the uh, reports that you put somewhere that um, just for example, in my case, I am I'm trying to climb Mount Everest, trying to get the money to climb Mount Everest is is really tough, it's really hard, difficult, and I heard and I heard that you guys. Uh, due to COVID-19 and all these restrictions, you guys couldn't find or didn't have a sponsorship. You guys couldn't find someone who could help, help you with, you know, with the cash, with the money. Uh, how, how, how did you do with that? How, how, what, what, what did you guys do? So, um, <clears throat> I started planning uh, winter keto very late, like almost in October. So there was no, no enough time to go and find the sponsors. And I've, I've, I've never tried to find any sponsors. Like in my previous project, like when I went for New Essence or I, when I did the solo climb, I didn't go for any sponsors. And actually, I didn't, I didn't want, want to go and find, find the sponsors. And this year, this year on K2, it was, it, was, it was a big project. And we, we were in need of like, big budget and when i started discussing my plan with with my friends and there there were lots lots of friends who were very interested in my program but they they, they didn't want to spend the money because uh, we we lost our job since 2019 november starting from november so our, our climbing seasons our trekking seasons it in it ends in november and like december january february it's like winter, winter time in Nepal, and there is almost no trees traveling. So it's like from 2019, November, we were jobless. In 2020, it's like completely nothing. Com completely, the tourism sector was down. And we are still not sure about 2021. So, so the climbing friends, uh, the climber friends, they didn't want to spend the money on K2. And I also didn't have time to go and find the sponsors. And it's, it's very difficult to find a sponsor in Nepal because we don't have big industries. We don't have like big companies. There are, there are companies, but they, they, don't want, they don't want to spend the money on, on the modernizing sections. Because modernizing is, it doesn't come in media that frequently. Because the companies like the big industries, when they try to sponsors they try to get some, something in return right so since we don't come in medias modernizing in nepal the media, media people they don't, don't cover these things yeah so we, we we are we are not in not not in public like not in public like uh what is we are not in the mass yeah i know yeah. so yeah so there's a bit less chance to get sponsors in nepal so i started I, when I didn't find find the friends to invest the money, so I said, okay, I'm, I'm going to spend all the money by myself. And I, and I started make, making a team. I, 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 I told my this year my friends, I said like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sponsor for everyone. And 
in return also uh, I'm, I'm also gonna gonna pay for you for your hard hard work so let's go and we go and we go max we we, we go and plan the plan the climbing uh and they, they agreed and after that uh, like it was it was very really huge money so i started i made a go fund page yeah where I, I collected like almost like nine thousand something and i told like what if money comes from go fund i'm gonna pay, pay you guys that that, that that was the plan but uh, nice. finding sponsors in nepal is really tough Fair enough. Yeah. Only in Nepal. To be honest, like I was telling you, even in Canada, it's is difficult because what you said is true. It's a, it's a sport that doesn't move that massive uh, amount of people and stuff like that. And then, uh, where where you see when you see a, a country uh, that it's basically, uh, you know, hockey and other sports, and then they are the guys producing the money and you know the big producers and the big brands so it is tough it is tough to find um support that's what it is it's right. tough to find support uh not because they they don't want to but sometimes also because uh, you know we are we practice a sport that it's uh it's risky and i and, and it and it's and it, i have to agree it's risky but yeah it's it's also very rewarding very rewarding when when it yeah. comes at the end for example you guys went all the way to history there's no one that can break that right you guys yeah, the first, also, yeah. The first right, people also, mm. that summit mount k2 in winter period there will never be anyone like that so you guys wrote history uh for the for the remaining of of of, of humanity and that's where the reward is huge, basically. Yeah. Also, the also the problem is that uh, our government, our government, we are in a very beautiful country, but our politicians, they are not good at all. So they they, they don't understand what this kid was. When we try to convince them, they didn't understand. But when we met, we met the history and. We descended back to base, base camp, and the news went like, like boom, like every, every big channels they they covered the news, and then only our government understood that this was this was a big project. Actually, like we we have a eight eight thousand in Nepal, and if the government was like if the government had realized those things, then the government had already sponsored all our all our expenses. Like sure. the gov go the government of Nepal should have like make the project to climb the mountains, like yeah. our own mountains. Yeah. When we had eight mountains in our hometown, and our government didn't realize these things, and it, and uh, our Western friends they came and they they climbed and they went back, and now 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 after we we climbed Keto, our government realized these things. So it's, it's 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 a big change in Nepal now because of because of our Kyoto exhibitions. Exactly, I yeah. I do yeah. I do really. Uh, that's one of the things that made me more happy when I saw you guys making the summit. It was to, that you had now the opportunity to show everyone, additionally to everything that you guys have already done in the past, because there is no one no one climbing the Himalayas without the help of the Sherpas, of you guys. There's yeah. no, there's no success in, in climbing in the Himalayas, in my opinion. And I think in a lot of people's opinion, there is no success without the help of you guys. And it, mm -hmm. I, am, but I, am, I am glad that you guys did it with, with K2. And I was very happy to see, to see that because now the government of, your, of Nepal might be might be more interested on what you guys are doing and stuff like that. I think I, I think I'm gonna have to climb and finish Mount Everest so that I can that we can do that too here. Anyhow, <laughs> you, guys go ahead. you guys go ahead. Excellent, next excellent. Um, all right, so I'm gonna show a um, a photo here that you sent over to us, and we'll just kind of chat about that photo. All right, so can you see that photo there? Yes. Yeah. Um, uh, so I don't know who took this photo, and either way, it, 
it's an awesome photo. Um, one of the most remarkable kind of hanging Chirac glaciers out there <laughs> that everyone's familiar with. Um, um, now, obviously going up this, um, you have the debris down at the bottom in the foreground. Um, what are the sort of things going through your mind when you're, when you're going up here and you see this, uh, you know, relatively fresh debris? So I, I took, I took this photo on 16 January in the morning, almost like six, six o'clock. Okay. And when we left summit, uh, our friends left a little earlier and uh, me and some of the shepherd, we left almost like half an hour later. So okay. they, uh, so our teams, some of the members, they are, they are front and we were a little back. Yeah. So uh, early morning, like almost like six, six o'clock, they almost touched the, touched the wall. So this, okay. this is a bit, bit, this is a bit near from camp home. Yep. So cool. at five o'clock, we were still in camp home. Okay. And the sun came, the sun rays came and we warm our body. We, we, we took a rest there for a while. We warm our body. Yeah. And I took this, I took this picture just before starting, before starting. Yeah. And there you can see there like fresh snow, uh, fresh ice. Yeah. Uh, like pieces, like pieces of ice. I think that was, that was, uh, I think there was a huge avalanche. Yeah. Just few days, few days before. Uh, yeah. with this campo it, it was it was not avalanche but it was like the part of this uh ice broke down yeah the serac fall and there it, it, yeah, yeah the serac broke down it, it came like this yeah so yeah that's that's on the summit day and you can see that see the hanging serac there yeah absolutely and ima ima yeah imagine going going down from that serac <laughs> and yeah all, all the serac are yeah they, they are like lots of cracks yeah yeah, like mm -hmm. I'm, like, I'm looking yeah. at it and I'm like, wow, like that's some. Fr it looks relatively fresh, this debris here, and I'm like, okay, well, that would really suck for, you know, like it's obviously something to lo uh, look out for. You're looking at the signs of the mountain, being like, okay, so you know, it's it, there's been some fresh debris that's fallen off this rack. We got to pay attention. You know, obviously you're going to be going up into the bottleneck and then the traverse there, and you're going to be underneath this for a. A decent time now how long do you think roughly did it take you to go from you know the berg's run there up through the bottleneck and across the that traverse like how long were you actually exposed to that hazard i think it, it took almost like three hours to okay. get to that um, that bottom and i can climb up and travel a little bit so it yep. almost took like three, three hours Two to three hours. Wow, that's still yeah. a pretty long time to be in ex in an exposed place like that. Yeah, yeah. like in, in in summer, it just take like almost like one hour and a half yeah. to cross those those spots. But uh, this since this is winter, yeah. so in winter, I think because of this cold wind and the low temperature, we feel we get very cold wind inside, and it, mm -hmm. it makes our body very weak. Right. Like gotcha. in, in summer, if we make three step in a minute, then here we we can we could only make one step. Um, okay, so I'm gonna transition into another photo here. All right, so now we have this one. Um, can you tell us about this one? Where where exactly is this? Is this at the top of the traverse? So and this this is after like after bottleneck, we we need to travel almost like ten meters. Yeah. Then then it start big. Then it start. Uh, going up straight. So this 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 is the beginning of, beginning beginning after the travels. After okay. travels after from here we need to climb straight up. Yeah. So it uh, is almost like at eight thousand two hundred meters, something like that altitude. Okay. okay. All right. Um. And it, now obviously I can't tell who this is. Do you mind? Is this you or is this someone? Are you taking this uh, photo? He's Kilip Kilipemba, one of my team members. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. And the background just looks absolutely phenomenal down there, by the way. Yeah, background you can see you can see Campo and Kentry in the background. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, you can actually see it there. Yeah. yeah. Um, see. all right. And then let's go with this one here, transitioning over. There we go. Um, so this must have been a pretty remarkable time when you're getting this photo. Yeah, this is on the top of Keto 
Yeah. Um, the on the on the right there's Kilipemba and on the left that's myself. Excellent. And it was almost like five, five, fifteen something like that time. Okay. Yeah. So let's see here. Um, now, when it comes to like a quick question for myself is um, the fix lines to get up through the traverse and through the bottleneck and stuff like that. Who is setting the these fix lines? Like, are these set from? And are you using the same fix lines from the summer ascents? Or are you? Or did you have a team with you? Uh, you know, setting these the fix lines for this ascent. Uh, this time we we were fixing all by ourselves. And okay. On on fifteen January when I took lead when I lead, lead the team from camp three to camp four. Actually, from camp to camp, it it just takes like two and a half to two two hours to two and a half hour to okay. reach from camp to camp. Yeah. But this year we got kibbutzes, lots of kibbutzes on the way to camp, and it almost took like eight hours to reach camp. We we didn't Im- imagine like that, yeah. and on that because on that day I was leading most of the most of the way. Mm-hmm. I was I was fixing myself in yeah. the in the ahead. So on that day, I, I got too tired. Yeah, I almost remained no energy to go summit the, the next day. So the next day, I said like I'm gonna stay behind, but I'm I'm gonna help the team to carry the rope. And if necessary, I'm, if like like difficult difficult places because I, I'm certified uh, UIGM guide, so I I got all all the knowledge, I got the trainings, so I got the technique. So I said like, guys, you you need to lead the team. If there are like if there comes the sections where is with the technical sections, if you cannot if you cannot fix there, there that those part I'm gonna fix it. I'll 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 help everyone to fix those those places. But on the summit day, I'll be I'll be staying more on the back. I'll right. I'll I'll help the I'll help carrying the ropes. So the team agrees and on the summit day, uh, our team member Mingma Tenjing. I, it was from Nim's team. He, from uh, camp four to the summit, every time he was he, he was leading the team. He okay. fixed every, every like every single meter ropes. On the summit, the way from camp three to camp four was not not enough for him as well. Right. He was he was he was like a, he was strong enough. He was he was leading the team uh, all the day. That's amazing. So yeah, we didn't have to fix anything on the summit day. Yeah, mm. that is amazing. Amazing. Um, it, it's about it's about uh, training. It's about before before you went to K two. Was that uh, what is it that you guys do? What is it that you did personally for training for K two to get you ready for for K two? Actually, mo- most of the, our Sherpas they live in in the village. Where they they have more physical work, like uh, they go they go in the field, they dig the dig the land, they go to the jungle, they cut the ro- they cut the trees for firewood, so they get trained trained there themselves. So they, they don't need any physical trainings, most like most of the Sherpas. In my case, I've been living in Kathmandu, and and in 2020 we went through lockdown, six month lockdown, and during the lockdown. I used to run every every morning on the hillside. I used to take a cycle. I used to ride 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 the cycle there. I I did uh, like wall climbing. I did running. I had a very very good physical training this time in during the lockdown. And I was before I, I was like uh, I got I gained lots of weight in 2019, and I was little afraid that uh, it might affect my climbing. But in from 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 the beginning of 2020. I started training, and I I lost a lot of weight. And this year, when I was on keto, I was physically very fit. Mm. But most of the most of the Sherpas, they just they just go back to their home hometown in the in the place in the place where there's no like no bagels. And every, every time they are, they carry uh, they carry all the things by themselves. Like if they have to take some one thing one something from one place to another place, there's nothing. Either either they they use yak. To carry, or they carry themselves. So, so they yeah. they don't need any physical trainings. The one, yeah, only, I, I, yeah. 
Yeah, I wanted to take no part. Just live. Just live. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It was. It was. Yeah. It was. It was a question that was here in the paper, and and I knew it because because from my experience, but I, we wanted to put out that for the people that don't know in every mountaineering, they they, they possibly imagine that. Sherpas get up at 5 a.m. in the morning and they go running. And I no, and no, I was no, talking no. to I was talking to the team and I was saying no, they don't do that. They basically just leave. That's what they do every day. They live in high altitudes, so they don't need to train so much. They just need to leave. Just do the things that they do daily. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. that's true. That's amazing. Mm. Yeah, I think the final question for me was. Um, now that K2, like everyone's been trying to summit K2 in the winter for so long. What's next on, on your list of things that you want to accomplish? Is there any other records or anything that you want to put your name on, on for the record and for history again? Or what uh, What are you looking at? Do you want to come, you want to come no. here in Canada and do some ice climbing with us? <laughs> <laughs> No, I think all all the all the like um, big challenges and eight thousand meters is all done. Yeah. So there's there's no no more new new challenges on eight thousand meters. Mm -hmm. And there, but yes, in Nepal, like we still, uh, we still we still like uh, making the environment. Where we could we, we can train the new 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 like new climbers, we make them we make them like more prof professionals, mm -hmm. and we have organization called like Nepal National Mountain Guide Associations, which give trainings to all the training to new climbers, like uh, from beginning to the to the certification from certification from the UIG, I have IFMJ. Yeah. And I have, I got the training, and you know the the very prestigious award, the Golden Ice Axe. So we Nepalis don't have that that uh, that reward till now, because we we went for climbing, and most of the our climbing was like on a fixed rope. And now now my my personal plan is that we. We should, do we need climbers? We should develop more like alpine climbing. And one day we need to get this Golden Ice Track Award. This one, this one of my biggest project in my like one of my dream. One day I'm I'm gonna make a very very difficult uh, climb like hard on the hard routes in the alpine style. Hmm. And if the, if that get uh, Golden Ice Track. Then I think that that will be the biggest achievement again. So, so when Nepalese climbers get this award, I would feel like okay, now Nepalese climbers standard is some something here. Nice. And it, that proves something like that. Yeah. It's striving for we, the it's yeah, striving it, for yeah. the next thing. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, till now we yeah we are fixing the rope, we are climbing up and down, but we we don't have that we don't have that level. Right. We we have we have that level, but. Still, we we didn't we didn't prove ourselves. Yeah. So this this is this is another step. And when yeah, when I get if if like when some uh, the first the first one like for the first from Nepal, if if there is anyone who we can get this uh, award, then the coming generation of Nepalese climber they will be more professionals, more professionals, yeah. and they will try to edge bigger and bigger. Which is, which is kind of which, which is a big big progress for Nepal. It's gonna be big progress for Nepal. So let's see. Yeah. So you're taking you're taking you guys are taking like youth young generations and uh, teaching them uh, young generations from Nepal and teaching these kids how to climb, how to become mountaineers and professional mountaineers, right? Yeah. The yeah the professionals is very important. Climbers, anyone can be climbers, but. Being professionals and just being climbers, they're different. That's true. So is it, yeah. is it like in yeah. school then? Is it a school where they go through everything or is it more of a one-on-one, -on -one, like more of a hands-on type of experience or how, do, how does that work? Do you, are, Pardon? Is, is it going to be like a school type program? Is it going to be, you're going to have the youth go through like a, a school or is it more trying to get them into the uh, climbing? 
we this 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 organizations this this uh, organization which provide trainings. Okay. So we organize different training at different time. Yeah. Like we we have uh, beginning rock, like uh, introductory rock climbing, which is for beginners. Okay. Then we have like rock climbing level one, two. This on ice team we have introductory ice climbing, then ice level one, two. And when they come to this this climb this courses like after that like faucet training navigations, when they get the basic knowledge, they are uh, eligible to fight for the aspirant guide, oh. which is the which is the first step up for going the going the international guide. Yeah, so yeah. once they once they complete the aspirant guide, mm -hmm. they are eligible to fight for the USM certifications. Okay, right. Which after which we you can go internationally yeah once you get your mount yeah. mount uh full mountain guide certification you're at the ifmga and then you get a travel and you can guide anywhere yeah. in the world um right yeah how long did it take you to get your so i'm i'm correct me if i'm wrong but you are an ifmga guide right yeah, yeah. how long did it take you to get that like, did you uh, obviously started, did you start uh, your I process started, in two thousand six, two thousand seven, and then did you did it take you know five six years, or did it, or did you no. get through the process pretty quick? I, I took I took my first training in two thousand eleven, okay. which was uh, which was basic basic motor training training. Yeah, and then after that, uh, in in the beginning of two thousand thirteen, I I I passed the injury exam for the aspirant guide, which okay. is the first first, first step. part of first step and um, i completed the, uh and in, in 2013 i passed the aspirant guides which was the first step then we were left in like from 2013 to 2016 between this like uh, we would keep on some tasks like we need to set some new routes and uh, we need to have we need to have client guides we need to have guided uh, some picks an Alban style. Those those resume we need we need to have uh, all the, all signed by our seniors senior guides. Yes. So we need to we need to fulfill some profiles. After that after that we could we would be eligible to uh, fight for the international guide. Aspirant guide is for the aspirant guide means like we we are we are, we are the national guides, and. Um, after after national guide, we our steps next step is the USM. So in 2013 I finished, and 2016 I fight for the uh, USM certifications, and I could hardly pass the exams because it it was very tough. The climbing grades on the ice, rock, uh, the geographical studies, navigations, deep like. Everything, every, every every single subject, it is so hard to pass. But uh, luckily, I passed and I, I got the certifications in 2016 March. That's amazing. Good job for you. Yeah. That's a amazing. Uh, it's a great accomplishment. Awesome. Right. It's, mm. just, it's just like it's just like it seems like it's never ending of the accomplishment that you guys have to go through uh, to get to where you guys are right now. Amazing! Congratulations. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's another one of your accomplishments, too. To be honest, I I, I never yes. even thought about I never even thought about becoming a guide, even though I've been climbing for almost all my life. But the reason why the reason why I never thought about that is or I it is stopped me from doing it is what you just said. All the process is really really difficult, and I yeah, it's very really tough. As much as you're you are a climber, you 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 want to reach top on summits and stuff like that. It's becoming a guy like you. That uh, that certification is really tough. Yeah. Yeah. You take that in in, in Nepal in too, or where, where did you take the training? Uh, we, we we I took the training in Nepal before okay. before we had to go France to get training. And also the French, uh, the French guide, the French. Uh, we used to have a teacher from France. France, they used to come and teach us in the, in Nepal. Okay. Excellent. And How many languages do you speak? Pardon? How many languages do you speak? I speak uh, six languages. Come, uh, 
six languages, in, including some of the local languages. Oh. Like I speak English, Hindi, yes. Indian, Urdu, same same. So English, Hindi, Nepalese, my mother tongue, uh, Chinese, and a little bit Japanese. Wow, nice. Oh, interesting. Mm. Just wanted to mention, so you, you have a website, so if any, anyone wants to check out uh, anything further or book a trip with you, it's uh, imagineclimb.com. And then right, you have um, Instagram, uh, which is G uh, on Instagram. And then you have Facebook. Do you have anything else that uh, people can follow you on? Or I think that's enough. Yeah. <laughs> Twitter, that's enough. What's your, what's your cell phone number? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I got all my phone number on, on my website. Is it, oh, yeah. Excellent. He, he, he yeah. doesn't want the girls to start coming and testing him at the home. <laughs> Excellent. Is there any uh, anyone you want to say thank you to uh, before you head out of here? Is there uh, any final last words you got? Uh, up like during this keto client, we used to get lots lots of like good messages from lots of the foreign friends, not uh, like from all over the world. And when we met Keto Summit, we, my Instagram, uh, Facebook page, and WhatsApp, so many messages. <laughs> like it took almost a week to reply reply most of them. Yeah, I think we're very thankful to all the climbers and all the climber lover, and all the well wishers. And we wish, or no, we hope everyone keep loving Nebulous Climber. I think thank you. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah, well, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for, uh, you know, indulging us with uh, your story. Um, you know, it's super remarkable, uh, an amazing ach uh, achievement. And it's great to see that, uh, you know, you were able to have that successful uh, trip to the summit for the first time in the winter. Um, as K2 is known to be a very dangerous and very hard mountain to overcome in the best of conditions, and you and your team were able to overcome it in less than ideal conditions in winter, and um, well done. Thank you. Uh, for my part, for my part uh, thank you for, for taking this invitation uh thank you uh thank you for the things that you guys do in the mountains for us mountains. okay thank you because mm -hmm. without you guys we basically will not be able to make it uh thank you for uh, thank you for such a big surprise and uh, such a big accomplishment because as mountaineer i feel very proud right now to say that you guys made it and that it's it's already done it's somebody did it and nobody better than you guys that haven't done it uh i hope you guys get here by the government of nepal and no, that, hope, that's, that's most I important hope, yeah and i hope you guys you guys keep changing the story of nepalese uh we have uh we have been going to Nepal to, to enjoy Nepal uh, for, for, for history and, and you guys deserve uh, what is going on right now. You guys deserve, uh, you know, congratulations, namaste and uh, gracias in Spanish for uh, such an amazing uh, job that you guys do in there for us. And, and, I, and, I, hope, and I hope to see you if, if COVID allows us, I hope to see you in April. Uh, if I go to, uh, I hope to see you in base camp Everest. Sure, sure, sure. Welcome. Welcome to our camp. <laughs> We're going to have lunch there. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Mm. Thank you again so much. Thank you. Thank you for spending the time with us and going and hearing all your stories. Mm. And yeah, thank, thank you very, you very much. much. We'll be in touch. Okay. Thank you, okay. thank you everyone. And okay. Thank you to all the climb, climbing lovers. See you soon. Thank you so much to Ming Maji for coming to this interview. Uh, thank you to Mike Stevenson for uh, hosting the interview. Uh, and thank you to Michael Von Klitzen 
and the rest of Everest uh, 2021 team for making the goal to climb Mount Everest uh, for mo women's heart health a reality. I hope you guys enjoy it and see you next time.